close-up is brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. All that fresh technology, you know the stuff you see in American crime shows where the police can pick out a car among thousands using surveillance cameras that read number plates? Well, we're about to join the club. Police here have just wrapped up a trial of that technology. It can analyse 3,000 number plates an hour. About one a second. Now, great for the cops, but is this another chip? A chip away at our privacy? And what happens to all that information about us? Matt Chisholm's been on the case. You probably won't know it. Uh, it's been very successful. But Big Brother is watching. It can read uh, up to 3,000 number plates in an hour. And he doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter what the vehicle is or who's driving or anything. It's looking at the number plate and it's, yeah, it's just going to check out that number plate. It's a mouthful. Automatic number plate recognition technology. Victor 3 from AMPR then. Uh, BMW M9 J3. The driver of that vehicle may be forbidden from driving. Technology the boys in blue have been trialling for three years. Using cameras fitted to unmarked vans in a database of high risk offenders and vehicles of interest. That gives a quick read of a number plate and then um, it alerts us if there's any interest in that vehicle. So, what do you then do? Uh, I then um, notify my colleagues who uh, today we have a checkpoint set up at uh, one end who will just um, do some various checks on that vehicle. Is this about revenue gathering or reducing crime? It's um, got quite strict guidelines about the use of the vehicle and also the databases that are produced. It's um, only targeted at high risk offenders and high, high risk vehicles. And we've also found there's a lot of links between um, um, our high offending traffic offenders and other criminal offences. So we may not, we may stop them for a traffic matter and then find there could be um, a drugs matter involved. Not surprisingly then, this is a model the police are keen on. If it was in every police car in the country it would make our, our job a lot easier. In just 30 minutes on this West Auckland road, they were alerted to three people of interest. What can you say? I've been done. Vehicle, a Rover W63, W63, as a vehicle that should not be on the road, it's a defective vehicle. Some motorists might be worried about you driving an unregistered, unwarranted vehicle on the road. Yeah, I, I, I can understand that, and um, if it was unsafe, I wouldn't be driving it. But um, it is safe, I know that for a fact. Because I'm going to take your word for it, aren't we? Yeah, I've checked it from head to toe. With drivers like this now off the road, the police could argue this technology is making our roads safer and that all the good law-abiding citizens have nothing to worry about. Others disagree. Well, if we could completely trust the police, why would we have to have all these controls on what they do? Thomas Beagle from Tech Liberty believes we should all be wary of automatic identification technologies and their effect on our privacy. Over time, the system builds up a database of vehicle move, movements, and that database can be used to track people. If you had a number of these cars around the country, you snap a car at a certain day, at a certain time, you could get quite a bit of information on a particular vehicle or a driver, couldn't you? Um, probably something you'd probably need to check with um, our bosses on that one. Thomas Beagle is particularly worried about that kind of information ending up in the wrong hands. Data leaks. Data is very, very easy to copy and it means that those, da those data bases of tracking information can be leaked. Um, road policemen can get hold of them. Uh, if the police make it available to other government departments, they can also use it. At least the aptly named Constable Nick Trigger won't be doing anything dodgy. You're not going to, you know, see a nice looking broad and a lovely little beamer and um, track that information, OK, Tuesday, <laughs> 5 o'clock, there she goes again. No, no, not at all. That would be career ending. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the police magazine has been hot on this. It's full of articles calling this the greatest thing since sliced bread. But what about safeguards? Why should I be tracked, even unintentionally, as I, as they say, am going about my lawful business? Superintendent Kerry Griffiths is the road policing manager. He joins me now from Wellington. Look, thanks for joining us, Superintendent. But, look, there are concerns. I mean, is this the start of Big Brother? 
No, look, thanks for having me, Mark. It's absolutely not the start of Big Brother. What this technology does is query a, a, an existing database of vehicles that are wanted by police. If you're not in the database, uh, the system just simply sits there. But OK, so for, I'm driving down the road, I'm, you, you're doing a, a search on a bit of the motorway, you clock me as I go past, I get clocked somewhere else. Somewhere sitting somewhere is a record of where I've been. No, there's a, there are a variety of systems around the world, but the system that we are using here, we don't retain the data any more than uh, CCTV would retain the data. So most of the cameras and the systems we use actually drop it off at the end of the shift. We're not certainly not using it for data mining. It's telling officers in real time that that's a vehicle we want to stop. OK, you did a trial. Are you going to take it up? Uh, I'm waiting for the results of the trial, and it's certainly something we'll consider. The anecdotal feedback has been it's, uh, been it's extremely successful. We've certainly seen a lot of people taken off the road who shouldn't be there, dangerous and disqualified drivers, uh, people wanted on warrant. Um, they're the people that need to worry about it, not the law-abiding public. What do these things cost? Uh, it's around 40000 a unit, but like any technology, it will come down over time. So it's not something that we'll be simply throwing out there. But in theory, as, the, as, as, the, as technology brings the price down, you could conceivably see these on every patrol car in the country? Look, that's a decision we've yet to make. It's something we'll look at in due course once we've seen the results of the evaluation. Look, just coming back to the privacy thing, if, for instance, you know, you wanted to put surveillance on someone or whatever, you'd normally go and get a warrant, wouldn't you? Yeah, this isn't about surveillance, Mark. What these devices do, they work very much like your scanner, and, in fact, 25 years ago, uh, the system we used, we would write the numbers down of vehicles we wanted. All this does is interrogate the numbers and the information we already have. It just makes it a lot quicker. Does it make you feel a bit uneasy at sort of all this technology and so much information people know about ourselves? No, not at all. It's, uh, in fact, it, it really just reinforces the information we already have on criminals and uh, vehicles linked to criminality. Uh, there is no interrogation of uh, your, your average driver who's not wanted for another reason. Superintendent Kerry Griffiths, appreciate your time tonight. Okay, thank you, Mark.